Ever wondered what would happen if Izuku Midoriya, better known as Deku, faced a different fate? Join us as we explore an alternate reality where Deku is forced out of his home and finds an unexpected path serving Momo Yaoyorozu. Get ready for a journey through a world where the unexpected becomes the new normal. Doctor, I'm sorry, ma'am, but your son doesn't have a special power. He's just 20% normal. Inko, what? But both my husband and I have one. Doctor, I'm sorry, there's nothing more I can do. On the way home. Izuku, mom. Do you think I could still be a hero? He said, looking at the ground, trying to hold back his tears. Inko, you're just useless without a power. How do you think you could be a hero? Izuku, B but mom, I. He couldn't finish as he was interrupted. Inko, your sister can create fire from anywhere on her body. She can be a hero. But what about you? Nothing, just crying and being a burden to others. Izuku just stared blankly at the ground, as if it were the most interesting thing in the world. At the Midorilla's house. Tetsuo, so, my son is useless, he said, glaring at the four-year-old. Izumi, I knew you'd only be a disgrace, she said, then smirked mockingly. Izuku, D dad, I. He was interrupted again. Tetsuo, shut up, Izuku, and eat quickly. I don't want to look at you any longer. Izuku, yes, dad, he said, looking at the table, chewing on a piece of meat. Izumi, what a waste, she said, sticking her tongue out at Izuku. She was Izuku's twin, the only difference being that she didn't have freckles and her hair was longer and straighter. Izuku, I'm done, he said, getting up to go to his room, leaving his plate half-eaten. Izuku's room. Deku, can I still be a hero? He said, looking at a figure of All Might lying on his bed, as if he were going to answer me. At that moment, Izuku heard shouts coming from the kitchen and quietly approached. Inko, and what do you expect me to do? She shouted at her husband. Tetsuo, you could have at least given me a strong son, not that useless quirkless one. Inko, Izuku was born like this, there's nothing I can do, the mom said, annoyed. Tetsuo, I told my colleagues that my son would have an amazing power, but now I'll be a laughingstock for at least a month, thanks to you, Inko. Inko, then make up that he is one, she suggested. Tetsuo, no, they'll find out sooner or later, the man said thoughtfully, but we can send him to a boarding school. Upon hearing that, Izuku's eyes widened. They couldn't just get rid of him. Could they? Inko, that might be a good idea. Izuku, upon hearing that, came out of hiding. Izuku, you can't just get rid of me like this, he said, tears in his eyes, don't send me to an orphanage. Tetsuo, oh, but we can, he said, with a serious look, but you're right, sending you to an orphanage would be too costly. I'll just throw you out onto the street, he said with a smile. Izuku, what? He said, his voice trembling. Izumi, what's going on? She said, rubbing her eyes, a sign that she had just woken up because of the shouting. Tetsuo, you're here at a good time, Izumi, he said, then looked at his wife, who just nodded, can you get your useless brother out of here for us? He asked seriously. Izumi, wh what? She said, surprised. Tetsuo, get the useless one out of the house, he repeated seriously. Izumi, be but, she was interrupted. Tetsuo, now, he said, raising his voice. Inko went and opened the door for Izumi to kick Izuku out. Izumi, I'm sorry, Izu, she said quietly, and Izuku just gave her a small smile, take this, she said, throwing a fireball at Izuku, who covered himself with his left arm, sending him out of his home. Tetsuo, I don't want to see you around, because if I do, you'll know why I asked Izumi to kick you out and not me, he said, closing the door. Izuku just got up with difficulty, his arm hurt a lot, it was burned, and a lot of blood was coming out of it. He tore a piece of cloth from his shirt as best he could and wrapped it around the wound to apply pressure and stop the bleeding. Izuku, damn. What a family I had, he said, starting to walk, there's a forest nearby that I used to go to with my dad, and the last time we built a treehouse there, so I can spend the night there tonight, he said, heading towards that place. Tenro Forest. Izuku was arriving at the place where he had built the house with his father, only to find that. Izuku, it's destroyed, he said, looking at how the place was, boards broken everywhere, and I'm not talking about Sakura. He just went to check a tree nearby. Unknown place. Izuku was waking up slowly to see a light on the ceiling. 
Izuku, am I dead? He asked to no one. Question mark, no, but close, kid, said a guy on the other side of the room. Izuku quickly got up upon hearing that unknown voice, only to realize that he had been sleeping on a sofa, then he turned to look at his arm, which was completely bandaged. Izuku, is my arm bandaged? Question mark, you're welcome, said the guy, eating a tangerine. Izuku looked again at a guy dressed normally but with a red mask covering up to his nose. Izuku, who are you? He asked, tilting his head. Wade, I'm Wade. And you? He said, eating another tangerine. Izuku, my name is Izuku Midorilla. Sir, if it's not too much trouble, may I ask why I'm here? He said timidly. Wade, I was hungry, and since I don't have any money since I got here, I went hunting for a deer to eat. But when I was walking, I found you lying under a tree with your arm bloody, kid. Just when I looked at the deer, you groaned, and it ran off. So I had no choice but to bring you here and treat you. And by the way, the wound on your arm was starting to fill with maggots, so it was a pain to heal you, kid. Izuku, my name is Izuku. Wade, I know, kid, you said it before so you don't have to repeat it. Anyway, what the hell happened to you? I mean, it's not normal for a kid to be in that condition around here, right? Izuku, my family found out I was quirkless and kicked me out, and my sister threw a fireball at me, so that's why my arm is like this. Wade, but what pieces of garbage do that to their own child? People around here really need to get their act together, he said, taking a bite out of an unpeeled orange, uck, this is good. Izuku, Mr. Wade, I've been meaning to ask you, are you a foreigner? The question made Wade stop eating. Wade, look, kid, this happened a few weeks ago. Flashback. Recycle the scene with some changes in a rough neighborhood. Deadpool, I'll pay you really well, darling, just accept it. Voice 1, it's a guy. Voice 2, guys pay more. Deadpool, I agree with voice 2, he said, to the confused look of the girl or boy, well, as I was saying, he said, looking to where the girl unfortunately had already left, damn it, she's gone. Then a car parked in front of him, and he saw a guy he knew very well getting out. Deadpool, Kinping, you son of a bitch, Spider-Man hadn't thrown you in jail? Kinping, shut up, Wade, I have a job for you. Deadpool, no, he said, crossing his arms. Kinping, maybe this will change your mind, he said, opening a briefcase showing a large sum of money. Deadpool, ah, you know the way to my heart, he said, snatching the briefcase and getting into the car. Voice 1, you're screwed. Voice 2. Deadpool, Voice 2? Later Deadpool, what is this? He said, entering an abandoned warehouse. Kinping, I want you to be my test subject. I'm going to send you to another dimension. Deadpool, you son of a bitch, he said, starting to be absorbed by a device in a rather strange way, my mana eye, he said, widowed as his money fell and he was totally swallowed by the device. Kinping, will it work? End of flashback. Wade, and that's how I ended up here, he said finishing his story. Izuku, wow, he said, somewhat excited, so you come from another dimension? Wait, indeed. Izuku, it's amazing, he said, then lowered his head, well, Mr. Wade, I have to go, he said, putting on his sneakers. Wade, where to? As I recall, you have nowhere to go, right, kid? Deku, I know, but I'm sure I'll find a comfortable place. Wade, kid, stay here. That surprised Izuku. Voice 1, you being nice? Voice 2, that's unusual. Wade, come on, guys, that kid has nowhere to go. Why not help him? Voice 2, hmm, why not help him? Voice 1, exactly. Wade, alright, just go to hell, he said, and Izuku looked at him surprised, well, kid, are you staying or what? He said, then was hugged by Izuku, alright, kid, move. I like hugs. Izuku, thank you, Mr. Wade, he said, smiling. Wade, but, kid, since you don't have any of those things called quirks, I'll start training you tomorrow so you can at least defend yourself. Izuku, can you fight, Mr. Wade? He asked. Wade, of course, kid. I'm a mercenary who belong to the armed forces. I'll teach you military-style hand-to-hand combat. Izuku, I'm really looking forward to that. Wade, well, there's some frozen food in the fridge, put it in the microwave and have dinner. 
I'll go to bed now since it's early morning, he said, entering his room, you'll sleep on the couch, he yelled from his room. Undoubtedly, being around Wade won't be boring at all. Izuku and Wade were in the forest where he found Izuku. Wade, all right, freckle face, I want you to do 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and 1,000 jumps in an hour and a half, he said, setting his Hello Kitty watch, what are you waiting for? The damn chimichangas won't make themselves. Izuku, my name is Izuku, he said, lying down to start. Wade, who cares? He said, lying down beside Izuku to mimic him. Izuku, Mr. Wade, why do you wear a mask? Are you a hero? He asked, struggling with the push-ups. Wade, because most people are scared of my face. Being a hero is gross. I prefer not to save people and just go to parties. A drop of sweat trickled down Izuku's forehead. Later. Wade, phew, only Spidey made me sweat like this, he said, wiping his face with a towel over his mask, all right, kid wonder, we're done. Izuku, but we only exercised. You didn't teach me military-style fighting, he said, stopping the jumps. Wade, if I teach you that martial art without building your stamina, it's useless, he said, strapping his katanas to his back, now let's go, or we'll miss the chimichanga cart. Izuku, so that's why he was in a hurry, he thought. Midorilla House. Izumi, I'm really sorry, Izuku, she said, looking at a figure of all might belonging to Izuku. Izuku and Wade were walking quickly, looking around as if searching for someone. Izuku, Mr. Wade, he's gone now, he said, tiredly. Wade, damn it, now I have money. Voice 1, you idiot. Voice 2, when you see him, cut his chimichanga off. Wade, oh, shit. Izuku, Mr. Wade, is it over there? He said, pointing to a certain cart that was turning around a building. Wade, all right, kid, the last one there is a loser, he said, about to start running, but a scream stopped him. Question mark, help. Wade and Izuku turned to see an alley next to them, only to watch as some men cornered a woman and what seemed to be her daughter. Wade looked between the cart and the women, the cart, the women, the cart, the women. Wade, damn it, he said, unsheathing his katana, kid, you better cover your eyes, cause this is gonna be R-rated, he said, going towards the guys, time to be a hero. Man one, well, well, aren't you lovely, he said, stroking the mother's hair. Man three, and the girl has more personality than her mother, he said, reaching for the girl's chest, but his hand fell to the ground suddenly, huh? He wondered, then started screaming in pain. Man two, who are you? He asked, pointing a gun at Deadpool. Deadpool, I'm Batma shot to the head cut him off, making him fall to the ground. Man 2, where were we? He said, looking at the two girls who, upon seeing that scene, only covered their mouths to stifle a scream while another of the bandits burned the other's wrist to stop the bleeding. Deadpool, you know, it's very rude not to let people finish talking. And I return this to you, he said, shooting the guy in the head. He fell to the ground lifeless, while Deadpool lifted his katana. Deadpool, honestly, I'm in a bit of a hurry, and if we finish quickly, I, he couldn't finish as he was interrupted. Man 2, go to hell, he was silenced by a shot to the head. Deadpool, didn't I tell you it's bad manners not to let people finish talking? He asked, shaking his head in denial. Voice 2, you guys are idiots. Voice 1, the idiot is you. Deadpool, can you shut up? The bandits and the women just looked at Deadpool as if he were crazy. Deadpool, it's time to end this, he said, with a serious look, are lowlies legal in this dimension? Later. Wade, all right, kid, you can open your eyes now, he said, then looked towards where the cart was, kid, didn't you keep an eye on the chimichanga guy? Izuku, you told me to close my eyes, Mr. Wade, he said, annoyed. Wade, you damn shitty author, you caused this problem just so I'd lose the chimichanga carrier. Izuku, Mr. Wade, who are you talking to? Later again. Izuku and Wade were in front of their apartment and proceeded to enter. Izuku, Mr. Wade, where are you going? He asked, watching Wade change his jacket and grab his pony. Wade, I'm going for beer and hookers, he said, opening the door. Izuku, are you going to cry, right? Wade didn't say anything and just closed the door slowly, only to be heard sobbing softly. Izuku, are those chimichangas really that good? He wondered before going to take a shower. Two months later. 
Wade, all right, kid, looks like you've got some stamina now for me to teach you how to fight. Izuku, finally, it's about time, he said, smiling. Wade, let's see if you can keep that smile by the end of the day, he said, squatting down, give me your best shot. Izuku clenched his fist and directed it towards Wade's face, hitting him squarely. Wade, you've got some strength for a baby, he said, then Izuku kicked him in the groin, okay, that's quite some strength for a baby, he said, then fell to the side. Later. Wade, in a fight, you should never let your guard down, he said, grabbing Izuku by the neck and sweeping his right foot, slamming him to the ground gently. Izuku, wow, he exclaimed, impressed by the cool move. Wade, surprised? He said, puffing out his chest with pride, with moves like this, Spidey used to spend hours trying to hug me, he said, happily. Izuku, he's talking about Spidey again, how many times is that? He thought, getting up. Wade, anyway, first I'll teach you to fight with these babies, he said, planting his two katanas in the ground and pulling out two smaller ones, you take the small ones, he said, handing them to Izuku. It was night time, the only thing lighting up the sky were the stars, everything was quiet in Kyoto except for a certain dock on the outskirts of some city. Question mark, will you ever shut up, idiot? Izuku, you should be calmer, Sandy, maybe that's why your wife left you, don't you think? Question mark, I've told you already, I'm not Sandy, my villain name is Motrio, he said as he transformed his fist into a spiked sand mallet. Izuku, wow, trying to intimidate a 12-year-old, pathetic, he said, closing his eyes. You're not liked, Sandy, not liked at all. Motrio, shut the hell up and act like a normal hostage. Izuku, I absolutely refuse, he said cheerfully. Motrio, aren't you scared? He asked with a raised eyebrow. Izuku, no, why would I be? Are you scared? He asked, tilting his head. Motrio, if that guy finds me. I don't know how I'll escape from him, he said with some fear. Izuku, oh, you shouldn't worry, he said, breaking the ropes that bound him. Motrio, why not? He asked, doubtful. Izuku, because that guy already found you, he said, pointing to the warehouse door. Motrio, what? How did he find M? He couldn't finish his question as a red and black figure kicked the door open. Deadpool, where are the ladies? He asked, tossing a strange device on the ground. Motrio, how did you find me? He said, turning into an ogre made of sand. Deadpool, you son of a bee, you killed Uncle Ben, he said, pointing his weapon. Lucky for me, I watched the Raimi trilogy, he said, dodging a sand blow and placing a mini bomb on his arm. Boom, B, he said, and after the explosion, Motrio's arm turned into glass and detached from his body. Motrio just regenerated his arm, good as new. Izuku, Wade, I got this, he said, running to grab a water jug nearby and threw it at Motrio. Now, Wade, he exclaimed, so Deadpool shot the jug, causing it to burst and turn Motrio into mud. Deadpool, well, now, he said, taking out a broom and dustpan, time to clean up. Izuku, yay, he said, unenthusiastically, grabbing a broom too. Wade, what are you going to do with him? He asked while helping Deadpool clean. Deadpool, just gonna toss him in the sea, he said, now taking pictures for evidence. Izuku, why? Why not leave him here since he's already dead? He asked. Deadpool, you didn't watch the Raimi trilogy, kid, so shut it, he said, now urinating in the sand. Later on, Izuku and Wade headed to a chimichanga stand near their apartment. Izuku, Wade, we need to train, he said seriously. Deadpool, chimichangas first, then training, he said, making Izuku huff. Besides, what kind of training is it today? He asked, checking his wallet for money. Izuku, today is sword handling, he said with a half smile. Deadpool, no freaking way, he said, remembering how Izuku accidentally cut off both his arms last time, ruining his chimichanga dinner. It was your fault, you were going on about why this guy Logan had adamantium bones but not grey teeth. Deadpool, why weren't they grey? Or imagine adamantium nails? How would you cut them? Izuku, with an adamantium nail clipper, he said, already annoyed. Deadpool was about to respond when from the alley they were passing through. Help, a Chinese woman's voice echoed. Deadpool, nope, screw that, I'm out, this damn author won't leave me without my chimichangas again, he said, walking away. 
Izuku just stared at Deadpool before looking at the alley where the screams came from. Izuku, I'm training to become a hero, he said, then entered the alley. Thief, that diamond necklace looks tasty, would you kindly gift it to me? A man said, eyeing one of the two women behind a man who seemed wealthy. Man, stay away from my wife and daughter, he said, stepping back to shield them from the armed thief. Thief, come on, just give me everything you've got on you right now, he said, pointing the gun at the man's face. They were about to give in to everything, but a voice stopped them. Izuku, didn't your mom ever tell you that stealing is wrong? Izuku asked from behind the thief, placing a hand on his shoulder. Thief, and didn't your mom tell you not to get into other people's business? The thief asked, now pointing the gun at Izuku. Izuku, well, she never really liked me, so she didn't tell me much, he said seriously. Everyone sweated nervously at how calm he was in such a situation. Man, kid, get out of here, or you could get hurt, the man said, taking out his wallet. Izuku, don't worry about me, I'm pretty strong, he said, then turned to the thief. Hey, I'm serious, I'll really hurt you, he said, pointing to the pair of katanas on his back. The thief, annoyed by the boy's persistence, decided to end his life. Thief, I told you not to interfere, he said, quickly firing a shot at Izuku's head. The family being robbed froze at the thief's act, but their faces turned to shock when they saw the boy without a scratch, holding one of his katanas. Man, I didn't even see when he drew his sword, he said, obvious surprise written on everyone's face. Thief, bastard, he said with fear in his voice, take this, he said, firing his entire arsenal, a total of eleven bullets at him. Izuku, is that all? He asked, sheathing his katana. Thief, this can't be, he said, tossing his gun aside to pull out a knife. I'll kill you, he shouted, charging at Izuku. Izuku just watched attentively as the man attempted to escape, seeing how his knife aimed at his face, he just tilted his head. In a quick move, Izuku grabbed the thief's arm and swiftly broke it with his other hand, causing him to scream in pain. Then, he grabbed the man's head and slammed it against the ground, rendering him unconscious. Izuku, in the end, you weren't that tough, he said, turning around and leaving the place. Man, wait, kid, the man said. Izuku, what's up? He said, turning to face the man. Man, you saved us, let me give you a reward, he said, pulling out a checkbook. Izuku, thanks, but I aspire to be a hero, sir, he said with a sincere smile. Man, I'm Tomoya, my name is Tomoya Yayorozu, and she is Erina and my daughter Momo, he said, shaking Izuku's hand. Izuku, I'm Izuku, my name is Izuku Midorilla, he said as the man bowed to him. Momo, you're bleeding, she said, surprised, pointing to Izuku's shoulder. Izuku, don't worry, it's just a scratch, not serious, he said with a smile to reassure the girl. Erina, even if it's not serious, we still need to treat it, she said, scolding him. Tomoya, right, kid, at my house, they can tend to your shoulder, follow me to the car, he said, followed by his family. Izuku, it's not necessary, he couldn't finish the sentence as he saw Erina's piercing gaze. Okay, okay, I'll go, he said, trying to calm Erina down. Later on. Izuku, wow, he said, seeing the large gates the car was entering. Tomoya, impressed? With a lot of work and effort, you can have one like this too, he said, causing Izuku to sweat nervously. Izuku, yeah, sure, he said, getting out of the car and observing the grand mansion. Mayuri, sir, we were worried, it was late and you still hadn't arrived, said a blonde servant with hazel eyes. Tomoya, yes, sorry, we had a setback, he said, then looking at Izuku. But this kid saved our butts, he said, patting him on the back. Mayuri, I see, I appreciate it, she said, looking and nodding towards Izuku, who blushed, angering Momo. Erina, Mayuri, please take Izuku to the living room so a doctor can check his shoulder, she said, then Mayuri looked at his shoulder. Mayuri, follow me, she said, and Izuku nodded, following her. In the living room. Izuku stood alone, admiring the spacious room that was just the living room. He turned his gaze to the door when he heard it open and saw Momo enter with a plate of cookies and chocolates. Momo, hi, she said with a smile, sitting beside him. Izuku, hey, he replied, giving her a smile that made Momo's cheeks turn slightly pink. Momo, do you want some? She asked, offering him the plate of cookies. Izuku, sure, why not? 
he said, taking a chocolate and bringing it to his mouth, a sparkle lighting up his green eyes. Momo, did you like it? She asked, as Izuku just nodded, savoring the chocolate. Izuku, it's really good, he said, trying to remember the last time he had eaten chocolate. Momo, I made it with Mayuri, she smiled at him. Izuku, and it tastes really good, he said. Can I have another one? He asked shyly. Momo, of course, she said happily, and they continued chatting until Mayuri entered. Mayuri, hello, having fun? She asked, entering with a first aid kit. Momo, yes, she exclaimed happily. Izuku is my friend now. Izuku just smiled at Momo's statement. Mayuri, I'm glad, miss. But now, young Izuku, please take off your shirt, she said with a smile. Izuku, excuse me, but I don't think it's appropriate, I'm only 12 years old and, he didn't finish his sentence as Mayuri tapped his blushing head. Mayuri, I'm going to heal your arm, idiot, she said, very red, in a calm tone. Izuku, you have to start there, he said, holding his head in pain. He just took off his shirt, making the two present girls blush even more. Izuku took off his shirt, though he wasn't very muscular, he had a defined body, showing no baby fat, and had very tiny cuts in certain parts. Izuku, um. Now that you've seen my body enough, could you please heal my arm? He asked, with a nervous chuckle. Mayuri slash Momo, oh, yes, they both responded, nervous and blushing. Later. Mayuri, alright, young Izuku, we're done, she said, watching as he put his shirt back on and walked towards the door. Izuku, thank you very much, he said, bowing, then heading towards the door. See you later, he said, waving to the two girls in the room. Mayuri, wait, she said, making Izuku turn around. Izuku, yes? He asked. Mayuri, they're waiting for you for dinner in the dining room, she said, then pointing to where the dining room was. Izuku, but that would be imposing, he said, about to say more when the maid spoke. Mayuri, the master wishes to speak with you, she said, causing Izuku to sigh. Izuku, all right, he said, then went with them to the dining room. In the dining room. Everyone was already in the dining room enjoying the delicious feast, well, everyone except Izuku, who had never seen so much food together. Tomoya, I'll be direct, kid, would you like to work for me? The question surprised Izuku. Izuku, work with you? He asked, confused. Tomoya, yes, specifically as Momo's bodyguard, he suggested. Izuku was surprised that he could be a bodyguard. Izuku, but sir, I'm not qualified, he replied. Tomoya, qualified? Come on, kid, don't lie, you just deflected at least 12 bullets without blinking, he exclaimed. Momo, upon hearing that Deku would work as her bodyguard, got excited and put a wide smile on her face. Izuku thought about rejecting it, but when he saw Momo's smile, he could only say one thing. Izuku, all right, I accept the job, he said with a smile. I hope Wade won't be mad, he thought. Wade, so, you're a bodyguard now? He asked, looking at the broccoli while eating cereal. Izuku, yep. He replied, lounging on the couch. Wade, and why did you accept? He asked, washing his plate. Izuku, well. Miss Momo is cute and sweet, and on the other hand, her servant Mayuri has her own charm. He said, hearing the sound of a plate breaking, Wade? are you okay? Wait, damn. For a 12-year-old to be surrounded by such beautiful girls and still get paid for it, you're one lucky bastard. He said, a depressive aura surrounding him, but well, after all, you're my apprentice, so I'd be offended if you weren't surrounded by cuties. Izuku just chuckled quietly, then stood up from the couch. Izuku, I'm going to bed now, my shift starts at 9am, he said, heading to his room. Wade, damn lucky brats these days, seems like the damn author just wants to mess with me. Izuku had already fallen asleep peacefully in his bed and would have continued to do so for another half hour if he hadn't jumped out of bed suddenly, grabbing his sword quickly, then turning to look where he had been sleeping minutes ago to see three 30cm knives piercing his bed. Izuku, Wade, it's 5.45 in the morning. He said, looking at Wade who was holding three more knives. Wade, so? It could be rush hour and I still wouldn't care. He said, turning away. Izuku, is it necessary to do this every morning? He asked, yawning and removing the knives from his bed, thanks to Wade, he had to change mattresses at least once a month. Wade, 
doing this will help keep your senses alert at all times. He said, leaving the room. A drop of sweat appeared on Izuku's forehead, and he decided to lie back down and try to fall asleep again. It was already dawn, and now our favorite duo was in the living room of their house, chatting. Izuku, do I look okay, Wade? He asked, looking at himself in the mirror wearing a black suit and making strange poses. Wade, honestly, you look ridiculous. He said, examining the boy. Izuku, that doesn't help. He said, finishing putting his katanas on his back. Wade, forget it, you look fine, you dumbass. He said, a tick appearing in Izuku's eye, by the way kid, I have a job and I'll be away for a while. Izuku, last time you said a while, you took a month to come back. He said, looking at him through the mirror. Wade, what did you expect? The Polish girls were hot as hell. He said, leaving the house with a suitcase, don't explore when you're alone, kid. He shouted from the entrance of the house. Izuku, shut up, you avocado, he complained, but there was no response, making Izuku sigh. Yaoyorozu house. Tomoya, you're quite punctual, Izuku. He said, allowing him entry into his house. Izuku, it's my duty, after all, what good would a bodyguard be if he arrived late, right? He asked, looking at the smiling owner of that mansion. Tomoya, well, your job basically consists of being with Momo at all times while you're on duty. Understood? He asked, receiving a nod from Izuku, I think it'll be good for her to have a boy her age for company. He said, then looking at Izuku, I'm entrusting my daughter to you, so don't disappoint me. He said, turning back to his office. Izuku stood there like an idiot at the entrance of the house since they didn't tell him where Miss Momo was, but he was snapped out of his thoughts when he heard someone calling him. Momo, Izuku, the little raven-haired girl shouted, jumping to hug him. Izuku, hello, Miss Momo. He said, giving her a small smile. Momo, let's play, she said, then taking Izuku's hand and dragging him to the backyard, which could easily pass as Central Park because of its size. Izuku, Miss Momo, wait, he said, causing Momo to turn to him. Momo, yes? She asked, tilting her head. Izuku, I'm here to protect you, not to play. He said, trying to stop her. Momo, I see. You're right, I'm sorry. She said, looking sadly at the ground. Izuku, seeing this, couldn't help but feel bad for causing that look on her face. Izuku, but I guess it wouldn't hurt to play a little. He said nervously scratching his cheek. Momo, really? The light had returned to her eyes. Izuku, just a little. He said, showing a smile. Momo, yes, she exclaimed happily, you're it, she said, hitting Izuku's arm and running off, catch me. From the mansion, a certain woman watched the children play while eating a slice of strawberry cake. Erina, that boy is quite interesting, don't you think so, Mayuri? She asked, taking a bite of strawberry cake. Mayuri, he's definitely exceptional if he can keep up with Miss Momo like that. She said, letting out a small laugh. Erina, my little girl is definitely in good hands. She said, taking the last bite of her strawberry cake. With the Mitarilla. Right now, Izumi was returning from school. She opened the door to her house only to find the same sad scene as every day, her mother crying while holding a photo of four-year-old Izuku hugging Izumi with a smile. Izumi, mom? She asked, sitting beside her. Inko, hello, Izumi, you're back. She said, wiping her tears, do you want me to heat up your food? She asked her daughter. Izumi felt a knot form in her stomach and hugged her mother tightly, do you think he's okay? She asked, trying to sound calm. Izumi, it's Izuku we're talking about, he'll surely be fine. He's very smart. She said, releasing her embrace. Inko, yes. You're right. Even without a quirk, he was always very clever. Said the older Mitarilla, smiling. Several years ago, two weeks after they kicked Izuku out, Inko and Tetsuo began searching everywhere for him without rest. Their options were very limited. Where would a four-year-old child go without money or a roof over his head? Inko felt like the worst mother in the world. How could she have done this to her son just because he didn't have a quirk? On the other hand, Tetsuo searched for him like crazy, calling some of his contacts, but they couldn't locate him. And lastly, Izumi. She blamed herself for what she had done to her brother. Maybe if she had refused at the time, he would still be with them. It's not that she didn't love him, quite the opposite, she loved him but didn't say it, and because of her stupid actions, 
he might be dead now. But now she had a goal, and that was to become the best hero so she could find him. Yaoyorozu Mansion. Izuku, M. Miss Momo, please stop. Said the green-haired boy, sitting on the ground to catch his breath. Momo, huh? Are you tired already? Asked the raven-haired girl, sitting beside him. How was it possible for him to be proud of his endurance and speed but couldn't catch a girl who was just running to avoid being caught? He simply decided to give up, lying down on the grass and looking at the clouds. Izuku, I wish I were a cloud. He said, feeling someone lie down beside him. Momo, why? She asked, curious about the boy's answer. Izuku, clouds just float in the air, they don't do anything, and if they get overloaded, they just release everything. He said without taking his eyes off the cloud. Momo, hey, Izuku, didn't your parents object to you being my bodyguard? She asked, surprisingly changing the subject. Izuku tensed up at hearing that. What could he tell her? My parents kicked me out of my house when I was four, I was supposed to have manifested my quirk by that age, but nothing. I didn't want to show any signs of appearing. The doctor said I belonged to the 20% of the population without a quirk, something my parents didn't like, and as I said before, they ended up kicking me out, well, they practically used my sister to force me out. He said, unconsciously touching his burned arm. Momo didn't know what to say, she felt like she shouldn't have asked. Momo, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked. She said, lowering her gaze. Izuku, don't apologize, right now, I'm happy. I met Wade, he trained me, he took me on his missions, I met you all, so I guess it's not so bad living like this. He said with a smile that made Momo blush. Momo, then I'll make sure your life is very happy from now on. Said the little girl with an unusually determined look. Izuku, thank you, miss. He said with a big smile on his face. Momo returned the smile, it was the first time Izuku had seen such a beautiful smile. That's when he decided, he would protect that smile, whether he was paid for it or not. About a week had passed since Izuku became Momo's bodyguard, or rather her fun companion. It was Saturday. According to Mr. Tomoya, this was his day off. Izuku didn't know what to do. He was just lying on his couch, staring at the ceiling. Wade hadn't returned yet, and he had already finished his morning training, so he had nothing to do. Izuku, I'd rather be looking after Miss Momo than spending the day bored, he said, getting up and noticing a small rectangular piece of paper. That's a lot of zeros for a week's work, he remarked as he picked it up and tucked it into his pants. He really enjoyed taking care of Miss Momo because, at least then, he could have fun like a kid his age. Well, even though that was basically his job. Izuku, I think I'll go to the bank now, he said, grabbing a white polo jacket and heading out. I hope the chimichanga stand is open. It's barely 10 in the morning, he said as he closed the door behind him. It's so cold. Later on. Izuku, that's a lot of money, he said, looking at the small bag in his hands. And I don't need so much, he muttered as he walked towards the exit. Izuku left the bank and went in search of a small food joint. He hadn't had breakfast, and hunger was beginning to gnaw at his stomach. Izuku, let's see. There's a pizza place, a sushi joint next to it, and on the other side, there's a Mexican food restaurant. They must have chimichangas, he said as he started walking towards the restaurant. He was about to reach the restaurant when he heard a whimper nearby. Curious, he walked towards the alley where they stored the trash. A knot formed in his stomach as he saw the scene. There was a black-haired girl, about seven years old, with tattered clothes, clutching her leg where she seemed to have cut herself. He watched as the girl tried to climb back onto the dumpster, only to slip again. Izuku caught her before she hit the ground. Izuku, are you okay, little one? He asked the girl, who looked at him with fear in her eyes. Girl, I'm sorry, she said, jumping out of Izuku's arms. I was just trying to find some food for me, my parents, and my little sister, she said timidly. Please don't hurt me, she pleaded. Now it was official, the knot in Izuku's stomach had risen to his throat. Izuku, I won't hurt you, little one, he said, offering her a small smile. Girl, are you not going to hit me because I'm tarnishing the image of your restaurant like everyone else? The girl asked timidly, looking at the ground. For a brief moment, Izuku felt a surge of anger. Why would anyone harm a little girl who was just looking for some food? Izuku, I won't hurt you, little one, trust me, he said, reaching into his pocket and pulling out a bandage. He knelt down to her level to apply it. Izuku always carried bandages when he trained, 
he often ended up cutting himself with his own katana when he got distracted. Izuku, right, he said to himself, taking off his jacket, leaving only a long-sleeved shirt. Here, put this on, he said, handing her the jacket. The girl just stared at him, surprised by this strange boy who kept being kind to her. Tears started to well up in her eyes. Izuku, are you feeling unwell? Do you have a fever? He quickly asked the girl, who covered her face and shook her head. Girl, it's just that no one has ever been so kind to me, and it made me really happy, the girl said, showing a small smile. But are you sure about giving me your jacket? I might dirty it, she said, changing back to a timid tone. Izuku, don't worry, let's hurry. It's getting colder, he said as the girl nodded and started putting on the jacket. Girl, thank you. The girl said, showing him a big smile. Izuku, you don't have to thank me, he said, stroking her hair. Girl, but you. She couldn't finish as a growl from her stomach interrupted her. Izuku, are you hungry? He asked the girl, who blushed and nodded. Girl, no, she said, shaking her head, but her stomach growled again. Izuku, well, that guy says otherwise, he said, pointing to her stomach. Is there something you want to eat? He asked the girl, who shook her head. Izuku, come on, little one. Truth is, I haven't had breakfast, and I'm new in town, so I could use a hand. Do you know where they sell good breakfasts? He lied to the girl about being new. The girl just pointed to a cafe across the street where they sold pastries and breakfast. Izuku, thanks, he said as he turned around and started walking, then stopped and looked back at the girl, who was just standing there looking at him. Aren't you coming? He asked. Girl, that would be taking advantage of your kindness, she said, with a sad look. Izuku, well, you see, my friend had to leave for a while, so I feel a bit sad eating alone. So if this lovely lady would accompany me, I'd be very happy, he said, giving the girl a smile. Girl, really? She asked, noticeably happy. Izuku, yep, he said, starting to walk with the girl beside him. By the way, what's your name? He realized he had forgotten to ask. Emma, my name is Emma, sir, she said with a smile, taking Izuku's hand across the street. Izuku, it's a nice name, and don't call me sir, it makes me feel old. Just call me Izuku, he said as they crossed the street. At the restaurant. Waiter, here are your orders, he said, placing a plate full of waffles in front of Emma and another with curry in front of Izuku. Emma, are you sure I can eat this? The girl asked, taking a bite of her waffles. Izuku, but you're already eating them, he chuckled. Enjoy them, he said, taking a bite of his curry. Emma suddenly stopped eating and looked at her plate. Izuku, is something wrong? Are they undercooked? He asked the girl, who shook her head. Emma, they're delicious, she said with a beautiful smile. Izuku was sure that girl would give him diabetes. But I was just wondering if it's okay for me to eat this. Izuku, I told you before, you don't have to worry, he said, taking another bite of his curry. It's spicy. Later on. Emma, Izuku, you're very kind, she said, giving him a hug. You even walked me home, she said as they walked together. Izuku, I would have worried if you had gone back alone, he said as they entered what seemed to be one of the poorest neighborhoods in Japan. Emma, my house is over there, she said, pointing to a small house with a wooden door and tin roofs that looked like they could collapse at any moment. Thanks for bringing me here, she said as she hugged him. Izuku, it's nothing, little one, he said with a smile. Emma, I'll tell my parents, she said as she walked into her house. Mom, Dad. I'm home. The girl shouted. At that moment, footsteps quickly headed to the entrance of the house. Eric, Emma? Where have you been? He asked as he hugged her. You shouldn't have gone out alone. You have no idea how worried I was, young lady, he scolded, stepping away. Ellie, Emma? Is that you? She said as she ran to hug her little one. Silly girl. I was so worried, she said, kissing her cheek. Emma, I'm sorry, I just wanted to go out and find some food, and that's when I met Izuku, she said, to the surprise of her parents. Eric, Izuku? He asked, confused. Emma, yeah. He gave me this jacket and guided me here, she said with a big smile. He's outside, she said, running to the entrance. Ellie, wait, Emma, they said as they followed her, but when they opened the door, he was no longer there. Eric, there's no one, he said, then looked at the ground and saw a strange white bag. 
his surprise reflected in his eyes when he looked at what it contained. My God, he said as tears threatened to fall from his eyes. Ellie, what's inside? She asked, then looked into the bag and covered her mouth. Oh, my goodness. Inside the bag were a large number of bundles of bills. Eric, finally, I'll be able to give them a good meal, he said, hugging his wife and then his daughter. Emma was looking up at the sky with a smile. Emma, thank you, Izuku, she said as she entered her house with her parents. Izuku was entering his house, walking to his couch, and letting himself fall onto it. He really loved that couch. His gaze fell on the ceiling fan, which was currently turned off. Today, he could sleep well for the rest of the day. Who said being a hero required putting out fires, catching villains? Izuku was working as a bodyguard at the Yaoyorozu mansion. Currently, he was practicing swinging his sword repeatedly since he hadn't found time to do so in the morning. Momo, do you have to do that every day? Asked little Yaoyorozu to Izuku. Izuku, since I don't have any special powers, I've focused more on my physical training and sword skills, he replied, wiping the sweat off. Momo, I see, she said, munching on a cookie. But is it okay to train with that katana? She asked, eyeing the broccoli sword. Izuku, what do you mean? He asked, turning to look at her. Momo, is your sword a bit damaged? She pointed out the small cracks on it. Izuku, this is the sword Wade gave me when I started training, he said, sheathing it. Momo, I see, she said, understanding why it looked worn out. I've got it, she exclaimed happily, standing up. Izuku watched in surprise as Momo placed her hand on her chest and it began to glow. For a moment, he was alarmed, but he calmed down when he saw the serene look on her face. Izuku, Miss Momo? He asked, confused. Momo, almost there, she said, showing effort in her gaze as she pulled out what seemed to be a black handle with blue embroidery. Izuku was surprised to see this, he didn't know Momo's quirk, but he didn't say anything as it seemed nothing new to her. Momo, there we go, she said, sitting down with an object in her hands. Izuku was amazed. Did her quirk allow her to store objects? Izuku, Miss Momo. Is that, he started, reaching out to help her up. Momo, it's a katana, she said, accepting his hand. Izuku, so, your quirk is storage? He asked, intrigued. Momo, nope, you got it wrong. My quirk is creation. I can create anything as long as I know its composition, she explained, showing the katana to Izuku. This one's made of graphene, a material 58% harder than diamond, she said with a smile. Here, it's yours. Izuku was surprised to hear that. Izuku, I can't accept this, miss, he said, shaking his head. Momo, take it, I can't have my bodyguard protect me with a sword that might break any time, she said playfully. Izuku, just so you know, I'm pretty strong even without my sword, he said, feigning offense as Momo approached him. I'll take it, but know that it offends me greatly, he said, taking the katana and starting to swing it. It feels quite light. Momo, yeah, I made it so you could move more agilely when defending yourself, she said, puffing her chest out. Izuku just listened and decided to slice a tree in Momo's garden. To his surprise, it split in half without much effort. Izuku, thank you, miss, he said, bowing, which displeased Momo. Momo, no need to thank me, after all, we're friends, she said, smiling, surprising Izuku with that statement. Izuku, yeah, he said, returning the smile. Later, living room. Erina, so Izuku, your mission is to accompany, protect, and assist Momo while she's at the shopping center, said the elder Yaoyorozu, watching as the two young people left through the door with the chauffeur. Izuku, I'll do my best, he said, smiling, as they got into the car, which then drove off. Erina had been evaluating Izuku during his stay at the mansion. She still doubted whether leaving a 12-year-old to protect her baby was a good idea. She observed that the boy's behavior was somewhat mature for his age. She could see that he was serious, a bit charismatic, kind, cheerful, strong, and handsome. She thought it wouldn't be long before Momo fell for his charms. She also noticed how he corrected the girl sometimes when she studied, she was homeschooled. He was definitely an interesting and mysterious boy. Car. Driver, so, are you the boy who saved Mr. and Mrs. Yaoyorozu and the young miss? Asked the chauffeur, looking at Izuku through the rearview mirror as he sat next to Momo. Izuku, you could say that, he said, laughing nervously. 
Momo, he was amazing. He moved his sword so fast we couldn't even follow his movements, she said excitedly. Driver, wow, that's impressive. At your age, you're already quite strong, he said, smiling kindly. Izuku, it's not that big of a deal, really. It wasn't anything special, he said, his expression turning serious. Stop, he shouted, causing the car to screech to a halt. Momo, what's wrong, Izuku? Asked the raven-haired girl, but Broccoli didn't have time to answer because another car rammed into them, causing their car to flip over. Izuku, taking the impact, hugged Momo to protect her, but in return, he received a wound on his forehead, causing a little blood to trickle out. He began kicking the door to get it open and with some effort, managed to get Momo out before getting out himself. Momo, Izuku, she said as she regained her senses and then looked at the boy again. You're bleeding. Izuku, don't worry about that, he said, heading to the driver's door to help him out. Driver, I appreciate it, he said, holding his shoulder. Momo, what happened? She wondered, then noticed more cars like the one that hit them were arriving. Izuku, this doesn't look good, he said seriously, watching as several armed men got out of the cars. Driver, sorry, had beans for breakfast, and now I'm really scared, he said, wiping sweat from his brow. Guy one, hand over the girl, he said as they began aiming their weapons at them. Izuku, so it's a kidnapping, huh? He asked, looking at the men. Guy two, hand over the girl, and we won't hurt you, he said, a little irritated. Izuku, you tempt me, you tempt me, he said, placing his hand on one of his katanas. But no. Catch her, he said, pushing Momo towards the driver to take cover in the car. Guy 4, we have to do this before the police arrive, he whispered to another guy. Guy 1, shoot the idiot, he shouted as they all aimed at him. Not me, you fools, him, he shouted as they all started shooting at Izuku. Izuku was really in trouble. There were at least 30 armed guys against him alone. Wade would easily finish them off, but he didn't have super regeneration. Izuku, all right, Izuku, one mistake and you'll meet St. Peter, he said, starting to cut the bullets he could with his swords. Some grazed him, but he focused on blocking the ones aiming for his vital points. Guy one, damn, they're already here, he said, seeing a helicopter in the sky. Izuku, now, he said, grabbing his katana and throwing it at the distracted guy, hitting him on the forehead with the handle and knocking him out. Midorilla House. Inko was preparing lunch, watching the news on TV. The news was about an attempted kidnapping, which was an everyday occurrence. But what caught her attention was something else. Reporter, right now, a green-haired boy is facing at least 30 armed men alone with a sword, she shouted because of the wind since they were in the helicopter. Inko quickly dropped the knife and ran to watch the news with great attention. Reporter, the boy doesn't seem to be more than 13. He seems to be trying to protect the two people behind the car, she said, then focused on Izuku. Inko felt a knot forming in her throat. She didn't know what to do, what to think. She could only scream. Inko, Izumi, she yelled, calling her daughter, who was startled by her mother's scream and immediately came downstairs. Izumi, mom? Is something wrong? She asked her mother, who didn't answer and just stared at the TV intently. Mom? She asked again and, receiving no response, approached to see what her mother was watching, but she felt her legs give out. There was her brother, the one they had been looking for for eight years without any success. But that wasn't what made her lose all strength, there he was alone, with only a katana, repelling bullets while they could see some of them entering his body. Izumi, Izuku, she said, covering her mouth. With Izuku. A few bullets had managed to enter his body, but that wouldn't stop him. He cut one bullet and quickly got behind one of the guys, causing the bullet to hit him and kill him instantly. Izuku went after another and cut off his hand, making him scream in pain. Izuku, crap, he said, holding his arm where he had previously been shot. Maybe if. No, that wouldn't make me a hero, he said to himself. At that moment, the sirens started to arrive, surrounding the entire crime scene. There were about 30 officers and 13 heroes who began to subdue the kidnappers. Izuku, wow, it seems luck really exists, he said before everything turned black. Hope Miss doesn't scold me for taking a little nap, he said before finally falling unconscious. Momo, Izuku. Later. Izuku, where am I? He asked, wincing in pain as he started to look around. Erina, we're at the mansion, she said simply, startling the boy. 
Izuku, holy all might, he exclaimed, clutching his chest in fright. Erina, am I really that ugly? She asked indignantly. Izuku, of course not, he said, scared by how terrifying Mrs. Yaoirozu could be sometimes. Izuku tried to get up, but an extra weight prevented him. Miss Momo? He asked, seeing the raven-haired girl asleep at his feet. Erina, as soon as our men arrived for you and brought you to the mansion, I had them attend to you immediately. Momo was really worried, she couldn't stop crying, saying it was her fault, she said, looking at her daughter. But I must say, you really surprised me. You faced around thirty armed men with strange quirks with just two swords and survived, she said, smiling. You're truly interesting. Those men would probably demand a ransom after kidnapping Momo. Thank you, she said, bowing. Izuku, why you don't have to thank me, he said, shaking his hands. Erina, I almost forgot, she said, catching Izuku's attention. The press wants to know who the boy who defended two civilians with just a katana is. Do you want me to give them the information or... Izuku, no, I'd prefer not to. I don't want to attract unnecessary attention, he said, shaking his head. Erina, I see, she said, watching as Momo began to wake up. Well, I'll leave now, she said, leaving the room. Momo, uck? Half awake, looking at Izuku. Izuku? Izuku, she said, throwing herself at him. Stupid, 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 she said, hitting his chest. Izuku, ouch, he said, showing notable pain on his face. Momo, I'm sorry, she said, embarrassed for hitting him. Izuku, don't worry about it, he said, smiling at her. Momo, don't ever do that again, she yelled angrily. Don't expose yourself like that again. Izuku, I can't do that, he said, amused by Momo's reaction. Momo, why not? She asked. Izuku, because I'm your bodyguard, he said, stretching with discomfort in his arms since they were bandaged. Momo, then I'll fire you, she said, angry. Izuku, still, I'll protect you, he said, blushing Momo. Now, he said as he removed the sheets covering him and stood up, making Momo blush even more. What? He asked, seeing how Momo turned away, then he looked at the mirror behind him and saw that he was only in boxers and some other bandages. Why am I naked? He asked, quickly grabbing his clothes. Later. Izuku, well, it's time to go home, he said, leaving the room with Momo. Momo, what if you get hurt? She asked, looking at Izuku. Izuku, well, as you've seen, I'm pretty strong, he said, making strange poses, and next to him passed Mayuri. Hi, he greeted with a smile. Mayuri, hello, she said quickly as she blushed and left. Izuku, that's weird, he said scratching his head. Could it be? No, I don't think. Or maybe? He thought, embarrassed. Izuku's house. He was opening the door to his house, but when he was about to take the first step, his instincts made him take a big leap backward, only to see three knives stuck where he had been. Izuku, ouch. What the hell? Why is the first thing you do when I come back throwing knives at me, Wade? Wade, I wanted to see if everything was still in order inside your peanut brain, he said, laughing. By the way, great feat, you did very well on your own, kid. I really doubted whether to help you, but seeing your angry bullseye look, I decided not to interfere, he said, making the boy angry. Izuku, if you were there, you could have helped me, he said, serving himself some cereal, annoyed. Four years had passed since that incident, and now we can see Izuku, who was walking with a bored look. Izuku, great, Mayuri had to forget the wasabi, he said as he carried a bag in his arms. Woman, help, she shouted as she was being assaulted by a four-armed man. Izuku, well, well, just starting the day and already finding something like this, he said as he grabbed his katana to handle the situation, but then he saw Mount Lady appearing and taking the villain with her hands, throwing him to Kamui who caught him with wood. Kamui, as always, you seek all the attention, Mount Lady, he said as he handed the thief over to the authorities. Mount Lady, I can't help it, she said nervously laughing. Izuku, it seems everything is fine. Well, I better go, he said as he left. Yaoyorozu Mansion. Mayuri, it was just wasabi, what took you so long? She asked, taking the bag from Izuku's hands. Izuku, you know, the usual, he said with a smile. Mayuri, yeah, yeah, whatever you say, little broccoli snail, 
she said laughing. Izuku, well, it would have been easier if some bleached blonde had told me what the hell was wasabi, he said annoyed, even in a store they told me that series had been cancelled, he said confused, someday I'll watch it. Mayuri was a little upset about the bleached blonde comment, but then laughed at his antics. Mayuri, you're weird, she said while laughing. Izuku, and you're annoying, he said with a vein popping on his forehead. Mayuri, you want to fight, tree boy? She shouted annoyed. Izuku, bring it on, Tinkerbell, he said annoyed. Mayuri, come closer, old man, come closer, she said as she got into a fighting pose. Erina, what's wrong with you two? She asked with a terrifying voice and aura. Izu slash Mayu, nothing, they said in unison. Erina, that's what I thought, she said as she returned to her normal state, Izuku, go to where Momo is and ask her to come down for dinner, she said as she entered the dining room, oh, but first, go get your new suit, be thankful I added some different details now, she said finally. Izuku, yes, he said as he left. Izuku walked towards Momo's room, as he did every day. He had changed physically, taller, his muscles were not much, but you could tell there was no baby fat left. His hairstyle had changed, all because of Miss Momo's whim, Izuku is the one in the gallery image, just a little more muscular. Izuku arrived at Momo's door and knocked twice. Momo, yes? She asked as she opened the door, Izuku? Izuku, hello, Miss Momo, you look more beautiful than usual today, Izuku said smiling at the raven-haired girl making a slight pink tint appear on her cheeks. Izuku wasn't lying when he called her beautiful, she truly was. Her lips were very pink even without lipstick, her height had increased, though it wasn't taller than Izuku's, and she had grown in other areas too, a lot. Momo, it's natural, my beauty increases every passing day, it seems like it's my quirk, she said a little blush turning away. Izuku just laughed at his friend's antics. Izuku, Miss Arina asked you to come down to dinner, he said, to which Momo then nodded. Dining room. Tomoya, I really appreciate it, Izuku, he said as he ate a piece of meat, you've done a lot for us, you saved us in that alley, protected Momo with just a sword some time ago, and as an extra job, you also help Momo with her studies when she's going off track, he said with a smile. Izuku, you don't need to thank me, sir, it's my duty after all, he said as he ate a piece of meat, it's delicious indeed. Mayuri, that's obvious since I'm the one who prepared it she said as she also tasted her meat. Izuku, suddenly it tastes disgusting to me, he said with a disgusted face. Mayuri, what did you say, mutant broccoli? She said angrily, I should have put poison in your plate, she growled annoyed. Erina, you two get along so well, she said with a smile. Izu slash Mayu, not at all, they both shouted. Tomoya, that reminds me, he said as he looked at Momo and then turned to Izuku, Izuku. Izuku, Yes, sir? He asked intrigued. Tomoya, when will you start calling me father-in-law? He asked smiling. Izuku, excuse me? Izuku asked confused. That took Izuku by surprise, but he didn't understand what Mr. Tomoya meant by that. But the other three women understood very well, Momo started choking on a piece of meat she was chewing, while Mayuri stood up a little annoyed by what Tomoya had said, and Erina just laughed. Tomoya, I said that, he didn't finish speaking as a tangerine smashed into his face, knocking him off his chair, courtesy of Momo. Erina, if you want to keep living, you better not say anything else, she said as she looked at her husband, on another note, the entrance exams for UA are in 10 months, are you both prepared? She asked Izuku and Momo. Izuku, yes, I've been training to pass the entrance exam, said Izuku enthusiastically, catching the attention of the two Yaoirosa women. Erina, but both you and Momo will enter by recommendation, said surprising Izuku. Izuku looked at Momo for a moment and saw her nod. Izuku, Miss Arina, I appreciate your willingness to help me, he said looking at her determinedly, I will take the UA exam, surprising everyone at the table. It was the first time Izuku contradicted Arina, but she liked that determination. Arina, and what if you fail to pass? She said, noticing Izuku's surprised look, I can't let my precious daughter's bodyguard not be there to protect her, she finished speaking. Izuku, even so, I'm sure I'll pass, he said firmly, still determined. Erina, very well, then I'll let you take the exam, she said with a smile, or so I'd like to say. I've already submitted the application, and both of you are in UA, she said, making Izuku spit out. Izuku, but, he was interrupted. Erina, 
you can still take the exam, although if you don't pass, you're still in, she said, watching as a big smile formed on Izuku's face. Izuku, thank you, he said with a big smile on his face. Later. It was around 4 p.m., and Izuku had been allowed to leave early since there was nothing else to do in the afternoon. Izuku, should I go train a little more? He wondered as he walked under a bridge, I think I'll just eat, he said, continuing to walk when a voice stopped him. Mud villain, you there, kid, you'll be my container to escape from this place, said the strange mud mass trying to grab him, but Izuku just took a big leap backward. Izuku, you've got a thousand years of training to do if you want to catch me off guard, he said as he placed a hand on his katana. Mud villain, just be my container and don't resist, he shouted nervously. Izuku watched as his punch came towards his face and when it exploded out of nowhere, followed by a victorious laugh. That's when he saw All Might smiling in front of him. All Might, fear not, kid, for I am here, he said as Izuku watched him disappear and then reappear quickly, which seemed strange to him. Izuku, All Might, he said surprised to see his favorite hero in front of him, will you sign my katana? He asked excitedly, pulling out his katana only to realize it was already signed, you already did. All Might, it's time for me to go, kid. It was nice meeting you, he said as he contained the villain in a coffee jar, about to leave but the boy's face seemed familiar to him, I know you, he said looking at the boy seriously, we've met before. Izuku, not at all, believe me, I would remember a meeting with you for a lifetime, he said nervously denying it. All might, I see, he said turning around, see you soon, he said taking a big leap. Izuku, and he's gone, he said looking in the direction All Might jumped, well, now to buy the ingredients for curry, he said as he left. Izuku was leaving a store with curry ingredients when he began to hear many voices to his right, sounding scared, so like a great hero, he decided to investigate. Upon arriving, he saw a large number of people surrounding what seemed to be a commercial alley. Izuku, what's going on? He asked a guy there. Guy, it's a villain, he's attacking a young girl with green hair. Like yours. The heroes can't do anything since they've taken her hostage, he quickly explained the situation. Izuku was surprised, there weren't many people with green hair, and that seemed to be only Midoriya's trait. He quickly made his way through all the civilians until he reached where everything was happening, while a slim blonde guy watched the boy pass through the crowd. But what he never expected was to see Izumi, the villain trying to merge with her. He could see a few tears of fear escaping her eyes. Izumi, help, she whispered, but no one heard her except Izuku, who could read her lips and understood everything. Izuku, Izumi, were his only words before he started running directly towards her. Kamui, kid, you can't pass, he said, seeing the boy jumping towards a wall and then jumping again to dodge them, what the hell? Mount Lady, wow, she said, watching the boy's big leap. Izuku just headed towards the villain with a killer look on his face. Mud villain, it's you, he said as he stretched his mud fist towards Izuku, but he fell to the ground before even touching him, what the hell? Izumi, Izuku? She thought, surprised but a little scared, get away, he'll hurt you, she said, seeing him take out his katana and make a big leap towards them. Izumi, afraid that the katana would cut her, closed her eyes, only to open them again seconds later to see a pair of arms holding her. When she opened her eyes again, she saw that the green mud was scattered all over the place. Izuku, damn. I wish I didn't have alley-related problems, he said as he placed Izumi on the ground, starting to run as he saw the heroes and reporters running towards him. Izumi was simply astonished, her quirkless brother had saved her. And she hadn't even had the chance to talk to him. Elsewhere. Izuku, if this keeps up, I'm going to start developing a phobia of alleys, he thought as he walked. All might, I'm emerging like a normal person, he said, coming out of an alley. Izuku, ah. Damn alleys, he said as he held his chest from the scare. All might, I remembered who you are, he said, looking serious at the boy. Izuku, I would appreciate it if you reminded me, because with the scare you gave me, I forgot even the color of my boxers, he said annoyed. All Might, you're the boy who faced thirty armed men with just a katana. Even when you were about to die, your determined gaze to save those you protected kept you standing, he said, admiring the boy, today, you performed a feat almost as great and left without saying anything. Izuku, well, I don't like unnecessary attention, he said nervously laughing. All Might, can I be direct with you? Would you like to be my successor? He said, looking at the boy who had a confused expression. Izuku, in what or what? He asked suspiciously. All Might, ten years ago, in a fight, 
I got this injury, returning to his normal form, I lost half of my respiratory system, he said showing him his wound. Izuku, what the heck? He said surprised. All Might, now I can only be a hero for three hours a day. Do you know what my quirk is? He asked the broccoli. Izuku, you've never talked about it, some say it's super strength even though you've never confirmed it, he said analytically. All Might, my quirk is one for all, he said surprising Izuku, or rather, it's a power transfer quirk. One person cultivates the power then passes it on to another, then that person cultivates it and passes it on, and so on. Now I ask you, do you want to be the next bearer? He asked Izuku with his hand extended. Izuku, I'm afraid I have to decline it, yes, I want to be a hero, but not like this. I want to achieve it with my own effort and prove that a quirkless can become a hero, he said with determination. All might, a long time ago, someone told me that if a boy really tries, he can become great. Now what I'm telling you is that you are that boy, and you will be the only one to fight against what's coming. What would you do if your loved ones are in danger and because you're not strong enough, you lose them? Izuku just stared at the ground for a few seconds, it was true, with just a sword, it wouldn't be enough. Izuku, alright, I accept, he said with a determined look. Wade, so, did you meet the jacked up blondie on steroids? He asked while munching on some chimichangas. Izuku, yup, he said he'd train my body to be a worthy vessel, he said, also enjoying a chimichanga, they're delicious, he added happily. Vanessa, thanks, Izuku, she said, smiling kindly. Wade met Vanessa on a mission three years ago while on a mission in the United States, so now they live together. Vanessa, but remember not to push yourself too hard with your training, you're still a kid, so be careful, she said, stroking his cheek maternally. Izuku blushed and felt happy, finding in her a mother who truly cared for him and loved him, and finally having her thanks to Wade. Wade, hey, hey, why all the cuddles for the kid and none for Wade? He said, arms crossed, making the other two laugh. Izuku, sorry, Wade, but I've got mama's love, he said, flashing a victorious smile. Wade, screw you, broccoli, I've got more than just her love, he said, wagging his finger. Voice 1, well said. Voice 2, he's trying to steal her. Wade, can't you ever say something nice? He asked, annoyed. Voice 2, we're like you, we talk nonsense. Voice 1, my back itches. Wade, screw you. On the other hand, Vanessa felt her heart warm up when she heard the boy's words. He had called her mom, and that made her extremely happy, as she couldn't have children. She had always dreamed of being called that. Vanessa, Izuku, did you? Call me mom? She asked, tears starting to well up. Wade, see, broccoli, she didn't like being called that, he said, teasingly. Izuku, Vanessa, I'm sorry, he said quickly, thinking he had hurt her. Vanessa, it's not that she said, wiping her tears, it's just that when you called me mom, I felt really happy, so please keep calling me that, she said with a gentle smile. Izuku just smiled back at his mom. Izuku, of course I will, mom, he said, as the woman smiled and Wade just got a little annoyed, seriously, how did an angel like you end up with that avocado mercenary? He said, pointing at Wade, who was offended. Wade, just so you know, dick face, I have many more virtues besides my sexy appearance, he said charismatically, and Vanessa just laughed along with Izuku. Vanessa, whatever you say, she said, teasingly. Izuku, well, I'm off, he said, getting up from the table, see you later, he said as he grabbed his katana and ran out the door, damn, I'm late, his voice echoed from the other side of the door. Vanessa, he's a good kid, she said, wearing a happy smile. Wade, and you're a stunning mother, he said, wrapping his arm around her waist. Vanessa, Wade Wilson, she replied, with a playful grin. Beach. Izuku was arriving where All Might had called him, which surprised him. The place was a beach completely polluted by garbage. He was dressed in a long-sleeved black shirt and white shorts. Izuku, is this a landfill? He asked aloud. All Might, I'm emerging from the water like a regular person, he said, dropping a trident and taking off his diving suit. Izuku, and what were you doing under all that garbage? He asked a bit disinterested. All might, you see, I went in for a swim to clean up the trash on the beach. While pulling out a van, a fish man asked me why I was polluting the sea, and I told him I was cleaning it up, but he didn't want to listen, and we ended up fighting, he said, tossing the trident back into the sea. Izuku, well, I don't care, 
let's just start my training, he said, excitedly. All might, all right, kid, the first thing you'll do is load that red van with as much trash as you can, he said, pointing to the van. Izuku, okay, he said, lifting a refrigerator with some difficulty, it's really heavy, he finally said, placing it in the van. All Might was surprised that Izuku could lift the appliance on the first day of training. All Might, Midoriya, young man, he said, catching the boy's attention as he was now lifting a microwave into the van. Izuku, yes? He responded to the number one hero. All Might, could you take off your shirt? He said, walking toward him. Izuku, I'm not backing down, he said, covering his body and taking a few steps back. All Might, that's not it, I just want to check something, he said, looking serious. Izuku, okay, he said, taking off his shirt and leaving one arm exposed. All Might was surprised. Certainly, the boy didn't have a great physique, but it was above what he should have had, practically having a better body than when he received one for all. But another thing that surprised him was his scars. All Might, kid. How did you get those scars? He asked, intrigued. Izuku, well, when you're 12 years old and you face 30 armed guys with a katana, you definitely don't come out with just a scratch, he said, nervously laughing. All Might, so even with bullets in his body, he still had that indifferent look, thought the hero, I think you're ready to take on one for all, he said as Izuku looked surprised. Izuku, really? He asked excitedly. All Might, yes, so, as he plucked a hair, eat this. Izuku, why? He asked confused. All Might, to pass on one for all, the person needs to consume a bit of the DNA of the current holder, he said, concluding. Izuku, nothing surprises me anymore, he said as he ate the hair. Later. All Might, did you mention that you work as a bodyguard, right? Did your bosses give you permission to go train? Izuku, well, you see. Flashback. Erina, so, you're going to train? She asked, analyzing the boy. Izuku, yup, as you may have noticed, to be Momo's bodyguard, I need to be stronger, he said seriously. Tomoya, are you sure you're not just tired of working here? He said as Izuku looked surprised, I mean, if you want to quit, just say so, he said with a kind smile. Izuku, of course not, he said, surprising everyone by raising his voice, you're like my family, so I'd never leave unless you fired me. Momo, can't you just stay as you are? After all, you're already quite strong, she said, her gaze betraying a hint of sadness. Izuku, Miss Momo, it's only ten months, we've been together longer, so don't worry, ten months will be nothing, he said, giving her a smile that made Momo blush. Momo, what if I'm in trouble? She asked, using her last card. Izuku, I'll know, he said with his smile, and I'll be there for you, he said, turning to Mayuri, don't miss me too much, bleach blonde. Mayuri, you're the last person I'd miss, she said, a little annoyed, but don't forget to eat healthy, you have to survive to keep being my guinea pig for my cooking experiments, letting out a wicked laugh. End of flashback. Izuku, and that's what happened, he said as he did a few push-ups. All Might, I see, that young Mayuri sure is scary, he said as a shiver ran down his spine, well, kid, I'll see you at the same time tomorrow, he said as he took a big leap and disappeared. Izuku, will he make a superhero landing? He thought aloud, well, I better get going, he said, starting to walk. Yaoyorozu Mansion. Erina, do you think he'll become stronger? She asked, looking out the window. Tomoya, he will, he's unique. If there's anyone capable of stopping what's coming, it's him, he replied. Erina, your foresight has certainly failed, but sometimes even quirks can fail, she said smiling. Tomoya, who knows, he said, looking at his wife. In another room, Momo was looking at the moon. Izuku had only left two days ago, but she already felt his absence. Momo, Izuku.